Hi and welcome to Brithawks 3DP. Today is another exciting day as I have a new printer to unbox, assemble and test. This is an Airy One Thinker SE. Now you might know if you've seen any of my other videos that I have tried a Thinker S before and I found that to be a very nice printer. This is actually my third Thinker as I had a Thinker 1 or Thinker, a Thinker S and now I've got a Thinker SE. This was actually sent to me free from everyone for me to test and give them feedback on. Uh, as much as it was sent for free, I did ask for permission to make a video and my views and my opinions will be my own and I'll tell you the good and bad as I find it. So usually I would go through filming the unboxing and the assembly but because this is probably virtually the same as the Thinker S I will skip to the finished assembly where I will give you any important information I find along the way and also give you any uh, immediate feedback on the design or changes they might have made. And then I'm going to do some test prints and give you my conclusion after I have finished those about the quality that I'm finding. So anyway, let's get this thing built. We should be back in a second. Okay, well, welcome back. That was pretty quick. Probably took me about 10 minutes, uh, maybe 15. It was uh, pretty straightforward and exactly the same as the others I've put together. There were four screws to go up in the bottom. Just be careful, there are wires running around there, so try not to snag them when you uh, assemble the two parts. You then got some end plates to put on. Um, the motors to connect, end stop to connect. Uh, the only new thing really was that the uh, extruder top part is actually rotated for packing which means you need to slightly loosen it and rotate and fix in two bolts. It was a little bit tricky, nothing terrible, but just be really careful when you loosen it, don't let that motor drop in case. So always have a hand under the motor while you just loosen that screw just slightly. You are then able to rotate it, twist one half of it, find the position, tighten up the bolt, put the new two bolts in and that's it. So that was the only tricky thing. Then you uh, attach this, connect the connectors here, which are all labeled up uh, and put the um, filament tube in here and a, a little bit on here, which I always like that bit um, just to guide the filament in. Okay, initial thoughts, first things I've noticed, um, things I like and I dislike. I really like the previous version which had an adjuster on the front for belt tensioning. This one you can adjust but it's not as easy as the previous one which was on a little a, a little uh, a knob that you just turned. Uh, upgrades that I think were on the later version of the S which I didn't have but are on his. All parts are injection molded not 3D printed so the fan shroud the uh, large knobs for adjusting the bed, um, even the little heater connection here, all are now uh, injection molded, not 3D printed, including this, which used to be metal. I'm gonna say I prefer the metal version, but this is actually injection molded, this part here. Um, now also I noticed that there is zero ways to adjust anything apart from tensioning the belts which you can do here and here. The bed is preset, uh, there are no um, uh, eccentric nuts to adjust, there's no eccentric nuts on here to adjust. Um, and there are also no eccentric nuts on here to adjust, which I dislike. I like the ability to tweak them if needed. Now, I understand, or I kind of understand where everyone is coming from removing them. 
I watched a video that they put out a few months ago. It was their two year anniversary where they explained their name, everyone. And it basically meant a 3D printer for everyone or anyone that wants to use it without, you shouldn't have to need any special technical skills to set up and to use it. So it's very simple, it's four bolts, it goes together and it should print. That does mean though that they don't want anyone to have to adjust the bed if there's any wobble or adjust the head it should all work perfectly out of the box and if it does great but if it doesn't that's when they're going to have problems um, and their point is that no one should have to adjust those things so what they're pushing for is a printer that needs at least no adjusting out of the box i can only assume that they do sell spare wheels when the wheels wear and you need to um, where you would tighten it you can just replace the wheels which is kind of simple um, with the bed now i know i can adjust it but it just means loosening the bolts giving them a squeeze redoing them where with the eccentric nut just give it a little twist uh, that being said i can't tell how well it does until i print i'm going to try and print now so it as long as it prints perfectly then it works that you've got a printer that prints straight out of the box um, and doesn't need adjusting but just personally because I do like to tweak adapt and work on the printers having that ability to adjust things I like but I do understand where they're trying to come and where they're trying to get to so we we'll have to see how that goes uh, just a little uh, update I mean they have improved some things that I mentioned in my last video. They, they supplied short Allen keys or Allen wrenches. Um, they've now supplied long ones, which is really great, just mainly for getting in. I find them a lot better. Obviously the biggest difference is that they've supplied this one with glass, not a magnetic bed. I like the magnetic bed, but again, I understand where they're going with the glass. It should be perfectly flat and should mean it will be a lot easier to level set up and get printing um, i could get the magnetic bed virtually perfect but it would take quite a lot of playing with sometimes to just get it right so this should be easier you get um, the usual things uh, say they've included a scraper this time because of the glass your snippers for cutting your filament and a little bag of extra what they call an extra gift but uh, a little bit of teflon tube uh, a spare belt some clips a nozzle cleaner a spare nozzle and a few connectors and a few spare bolts so that's quite nice that they include that another bugbear for me i preferred on the original and the first thinker s it had a large sd card slot this one has a small sd card a micro sd card I personally don't like the small SD card or micro SD cards. I prefer the large SD cards. So I dislike that, but it works. So let's hope. I'm now gonna level the bed. I'm not gonna bore you with that. You've heard me waffle enough. I'm going to run all the test prints, which I've checked the three test prints on the card. So I'm gonna run all three and see how they come out. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now and I'll come back to you with my final thoughts at the end. Okay, this has just started. Looks like it's printing uh, a Benji. Oh, Benchy, <laughs> not Benji, Benchy. Uh, and yeah, leveling is easy. I've done videos on it before, but I just heat the bed after homing, disable the steppers, move to all the corners. And um, I should say before I start, I lower the bed quite low. I then home, so it doesn't smash into the bed. Then I move the, uh, then I disable the steppers, move to all the corners, adjust roughly with a piece of paper till I get it just dragging all four corners. Then I do all four corners again till I get it just dragging on the paper, all four corners. And then I just hit print and uh, this is printing great the first time, it's sticking very well. I'm going to let this continue now and let it print and see how it finishes.
Okay, first print finished. Bed still warm, but it has just popped off. Okay, a bit stringy, but that can be fixed in settings, I'm sure. Otherwise, looks pretty good. Possibly an issue with the front there. I'm not an expert at benches, but looks quite nice. Okay, now for the next. Okay, print two is finished. Well, popped off quite nicely. Again, a little bit of light stringing, but it looks pretty good. That's the seam. That could be got rid of by just the settings, but generally it looks quite nice. Okay. Okay, it's uh, day two. I've done uh, four prints with the Thinker SE and uh, the results seem pretty good um, first was the benchy uh, apart from a little bit of an issue just at the front here and i think that's to do with the fan and if i probably if it was just positioned slightly different on the bed it would have uh, printed fine other than that everything seems good a little bit of stringing and that's just a bit of a traction issue you can fix that in the settings otherwise it looks pretty good yeah, it's nice. Next was the squirrel. Again, a little bit of stringing just here. Other than that, I can't see really anything wrong with it at all. And the next print, this one was printing through the night. Uh, it's probably about three hours or two hours or so. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, calibration cube, quite a large size. And today I just printed a little vase to test vase mode. Generally it came out quite nice. It's just a very small vase. So, um, my initial thoughts on the printer. Out of the box, it went together very easily. Um, usual things, the only real, as I already mentioned, was just be careful when you reposition this and bolt that in the uh, for the extruder uh, obviously the glass paint is different it's nice that you've got all the injection molded parts now that's good uh, I still don't particularly like micro SD but it's a very small point um, the software works fine it heats pretty quick it's extremely quiet like the others and I don't think this is even slightly <laughs> a bit more quiet than than the other thinkers um, the glass bed helps with, you know, you've got a very level bed. It's easy to level it and uh, get printing straight away. Um, I had no issues with the adhesion with the uh, any cubic or um, style um, glass bed, textured bed. It works really well. You let it go cold and they just pop straight off. So I really like that. Uh, I probably am still a fan of the flexible steel beds, but this works fine. It just means you, it for, it's best to let it go cold, then remove the print. I wouldn't use the scraper, which is supplied on the textured side, only if you're going to be using the uh, plain glass side where you're using masking tape or however you wish uh, for your adhesion. This will help. Um, yeah. It, it did what this you know what I think they're aiming for it printed straight out of the box I didn't have to play much with it the only thing I did as I tend to do out of standard is just check the tension of the bed uh, sorry the belts 
tight, uh, just adjusted this slightly and tightened this one slightly, but you know, they're working fine. Um, didn't need to touch anything else. The bed uh, is nice and um, uh, it's got no wobble in it. The gantry's got no wobble in it. The, the head's got no wobble in it. it. All feels really nice. So uh, again, I would have liked to see a, uh, the uh, concentric or um, nuts that you can adjust, but if their aim is to have a printer that you don't need that and you don't shouldn't need to adjust things, then they got it right. It worked perfectly from the box. So yeah, uh, a round of applause for that one. It really prints nicely straight out of the box. I didn't have to do anything majorly to it. Nothing that you would want to do, you know, as I say, just tension your belts and make sure that's good. Uh, word of warnings, just when you are uh, attaching this, as I said, careful the motor doesn't drop because you need to loosen one of the screws to turn it and also the way it's packed this little cable for the hotbed tends to fall this way and I think there is a possibility that on its furthest point it's going to snag uh, because of the I say when it's packed it's kinked this way I did have that with previous printers but all you've got to do is kind of force it the other way for a little while and then it tends to miss that so just keep an eye on that uh, if you're especially if you're printing the whole bed you're going to want to just watch that for the first few times and make sure you keep that out of the way i'm sure there's something out there that you can print and put it on this 2020 exclusion uh, and then that will stop that from happening but you know it's never really a major problem if you're printing in the middle and after a while of just pushing out of the way it sort of finds its natural place which is away from that anyway so Conclusion, yeah, it's a really nice printer. I'm happy that print quality is great. It's easy to set up. So if they're aiming for the first time users, it's it's nice and it works well. Um, I hope you might have found this useful. If you're thinking of getting one, I know you can get them on, on Amazon, uh, UK definitely. I'm not sure around the rest of the world, but I'm sure it's available. Um, uh, Everyone has a great Facebook page. I'll try and put a link in the bottom to their Facebook page where you can get all the help you might want. Uh, I am on there as well. So if you have any questions you can ask me there, you can leave a comment in, the, uh, in this video and I will try to reply to you as quickly as possible. Uh, if it has been helpful, please give us a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing, it uh, helps the channel. Um, I, I know I'm not that big, but I'm hoping one day that I might get there. Uh, apart from that, obviously we're still in the coronavirus, so please keep safe, uh, keep that two meter distance, cover your face when you're going into shops, which we have to do now. And um, as always, happy printing. Thank you.